Let's take a look at adding and subtracting uh, rational expressions. <coughs> and take a look at our first problem. We got uh, x over 7x squared plus 34x minus 5 plus 5 over 7x squared plus 34x minus 5. And instructions say perform the indicated operation, simplify the result. This is going to be adding, subtracting, rational expressions, with the same denominator. So adding and subtracting rational expressions when they have the same denominator. <coughs> well, our first step is we'll add or subtract the top parts, the numerators. <coughs> and put into a single fraction. So we'll add or subtract top parts and put into a single fraction. Well here we have a plus between it. So we'll add top parts, x plus 5. And then our denominator stays the same. Because the denominator is both these are uh, the exactly the same. There we go. <coughs> Step two. Factor the top and factor the bottom. So factor the numerator and denominator. Well on this particular one here um, the top part uh, doesn't factor, but the bottom top part does. This is the key number. We got x squared x, no x, and there's number for x squared. Well, with the key number, we take the number at the beginning times the number at the end, ignoring signs. So 7 times 5 gives us 35. And we'll come up with our three columns. Product column, the p column, we write down all products, give us 35. We got 1 times 35. We got 2, 3, 4, 5 times 7. I think that's it. The S column, we add these numbers together. 1 plus 35 is 36. 5 plus 7 is 12. The difference column, we subtract them. 35 minus 1 is 34. 7 minus 5 is 2. The number we're looking for is a number in our middle term, which is 34, which is right here. So we're going to use 1 and 35. We got 7x squared plus 34x minus 5. We're going to rewrite our middle term using those two numbers. The larger number in our p column that we're using, which is the 35, is always going to be the same sign as the middle term, which was positive. The number we circled in a difference column, d for different signs, means one's positive and one's negative. So if the 35 is positive, then the 1 has to be negative. And then we'll factor by grouping. Uh, the first two terms, first group, has a 7x in common. And that gives us x plus 5. Second group doesn't have anything in common, but my first term is negative. So we'll factor out a negative 1. And that gives us x plus 5. Now, now they both have an x plus 5, so I'll factor that out. And uh, you basically can cross out the x plus 5s here to see what goes in your second set of parentheses, which would be 7x minus 1. So this becomes x plus 5 over x plus 5 times 7x minus 1. Well, step 3. Cancel if possible.
Now, notice we have the same item up on top and on the bottom. They both have an x plus 5. So those x plus 5 is going to cancel. And we're left with 1 over 7x minus 1. And that's our answer. Now, the reason why we can cancel here is because we got x plus 5 times 7x minus 1. It's multiplication. Um, you can't cancel up here at our original problem like the x and the x squared because you got pluses and minuses in here. Uh, you have to have multiplication like this. Let's take a look at another problem. Okay, number two. We've got 5x squared minus 9x plus 30 over x squared minus 6x minus 27 minus 4x squared <coughs> minus 5x plus 51 all over x squared minus 6x minus 27. Okay. Step 1. Add or subtract the top parts. Well, here we have a minus. Now, whenever you have a minus out in front of your fraction, uh, this is going to flip a sign of all the terms up on top. So it's going to flip a sign of all those. So this becomes 5x squared minus 9x plus 30 minus 4x squared plus 5x minus 51. And then the denominator stays as is. Well, always in math, we want to combine together like terms. 5x squared minus 4x squared gives us x squared. Negative 9x plus 5x gives us negative 4x. 30 minus 51 is negative 21 over x squared minus 6x minus 27. Step two, uh, factor the top, factor the bottom. Both of these are the PSD method. Let's look at the top part first. We got um, x squared, x, no x, and there's no number in front of the x squared. That's what tells us PSD. We take the number at the end to 21, ignoring signs. And we're going to come up with our three columns, our P column. We'll write down all products, give us 21. We got 1 times 21, 3 times 7, and I think that's it. Sum column, we add these together. 1 plus 21 is 22, 3 plus 7 is 10. The difference column, we subtract them. 21 minus 1 is 20, 7 minus 3 is 4. Now the number we're looking for is a number in our middle term, which is 4, which is right here, so we're going to use 3 and 7. Now our larger number that we're using um, in the P column, which is 7, will always be the same sign as the middle term. We had a negative 4x, so the middle term's negative, so this is negative. The number we circled in the difference column, D for different signs, so if this one's negative, then the other one has to be positive. Let's look at the bottom one now. Um, PSD again, because it's x squared, x, no x, no number in front of the x squared. Take the number at the end, 27, and we'll come up with our three columns. We'll write down all products, give us 27. We got 1 times 27, 3 times 9. The S column, we add them together. 1 plus 27 is 28, 3 plus 9 is 12. Difference column, we subtract them. 27 minus 1 is 26, 9 minus 3 is 3. Uh, I've seemed to. Oh, I can't subtract. <laughs> I better go to bed. 9 minus 3 is 6. Okay, the number we're looking for is a number in our middle term, which is 6, which is right here. So we're going to use 3 and 9. Now our larger number in the P column, which is a 9, will always be the same sign as the middle term, which was negative. The number I circles in the difference column, D for different signs, means one's positive, one's negative. So if this one's negative, then the other one has to be positive. Step three, cancel if possible. Well, I noticed that the top and the bottom both have an x plus three. So those are going to cancel. 
and we're left with x minus 7 over x minus 9. Now the x's can't cancel here because this is x minus 7. It has to be multiplication for you to be able to cancel. See how this was x plus 3 times x minus 7 and this was x plus 3 times x minus 9. That's why we could cancel because those were multiplication. So that's our answer. Now the next problem gets into different denominators. So your denominators aren't the same. So let's take a look at that. We have x plus 5 over x minus 3 minus 13x plus 26 And um, then we got x squared minus x minus 6. This one actually has a little bit of a, a shortcut that I'm going to ignore. Uh, I will mention, mention it here. But this is uh, going to be adding slash subtracting rational expressions. with different denominators. If you can read my writing. So our denominators are different. <coughs> well, step one. Factor all the denominators. So factor all the denominators. Now the x minus 3 we can't do anything with, but the other one is a PSD. And I didn't hardly leave room here, but uh, we have x squared x, no x, and uh, there's no number for the x squared. Well, we take the number at the end, which is a 6, and we're going to create our three columns. The p column, we write down all products, give us 6. We got 1 times 6, 2 times 3. The sum column, we add those together. 1 plus 6 is 7, 2 plus 3 is 5. Difference column, subtract smaller from larger. 6 minus 1 is 5, 3 minus 2 is 1. So, we're going to have x here, we're going to have x here. The number in the middle is a, the invisible 1, which is right here, so we're going to use 2 and 3. Now our larger number that we're using, which is the 3, is always going to be the same size as the middle term. Well, middle term was a negative x, um, so this will be a negative 3. Number with circles in the difference column, d for different signs. So if this is negative, the other one has to be positive. Now the shortcut on this one is if you're good at factoring, if you see that you can factor the top and factor the bottom and something would cancel, go ahead and do that. Like up on top, notice how these both uh, have a 13 in common. I can factor that out and that gives me an x 13 times x plus 2. And then the x plus 2's would cancel. Uh, again, I'm going to ignore that. Um, typically, people in intermediate algebra aren't that uh, great at factoring yet. Uh, they get there uh, after this chapter. Um, but let me, s let me continue on with this. Step two, figure out the LCD, least common denominator, assuming I could spell. <coughs> so least common denominator, and rewrite each fraction and re rewrite each fraction with that denominator. Okay, um, let's start off with our first factor, uh, the x minus 3. Now, the question we're going to be asking is we're looking for the greatest number of x minus 3's in any single denominator. Again, we're looking for the greatest number of x minus 3's in any single denominator. There's one here, and there's one here. So the greatest number of x minus 3's in any single denominator is 1. 
Now I go to my next factor, the x plus 2. And I'm looking for the greatest number of x plus 2's in a single denominator. There's none here, there's one here. So the greatest number of x plus 2's in a single denominator is 1. Now the answer to that will almost always be 1. Um, so that's our LCD. Well, after we figure out the LCD, we want to re rewrite each fraction with that denominator. Now our second fraction already had that denominator, so it stays as is. So this is 13x plus 26. Now if we look at our first, uh, first fraction, first denominator, we had an x minus 3, the x minus 3 is still there. The new item I put downstairs is the x plus 2. So whatever new item you put down here, you have to put up on top. Now the mathematical principle behind that is whatever you multiply by the bottom, you have to multiply by the top. Well, I'm going to multiply these together. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. 5 times x is 5x. And 5 times 2 is 10. And the denominator stays the same. Minus 13x plus 26 over x minus 3 times x plus 2. Now you never get rid of the parentheses down in the denominator because you're actually hoping they'll, ca they'll cancel away later on. We can still combine these together. 2x plus 5x is 7x. So we've got x squared plus 7x plus 10 over x minus 3 times x plus 2 minus 13x plus 26 over x minus 3 times x plus 2. Now you probably notice at this point that they have the same denominators. So this goes back to the steps we just looked at. We're going to add or subtract the top parts. and put into a single fraction. Now remember, if you have a, a negative, a minus, out in front of your um, fraction, it has to flip a sign of all the terms up on top. So we're going to flip a sign to 13x and the 26. So this becomes x squared plus 7x plus 10 minus 13x minus 26 and our denominator stays the same well no matter where you are in math combine together like terms we got x squared 7x minus 13x gives us negative 6x 10 minus 26 gives us negative 16 denominator stays as is step 4 Factor the top, factor the bottom. So factor the numerator, factor the denominator. Well, the bottom part's already factored. So unless you actually uh, multiply these together, which you shouldn't, never, never get rid of the parentheses in the denominator, uh, unless you multiply those together, you shouldn't have to factor the bottom part. The top part, though, is going to be the PSD. We have x squared, x, no x, no number in front of the x squared. Take the number at the end, which is 16. We ignore signs. We handle that later on. And we'll come up with our three columns. We write down all products, give us 16. We got 1 times 16, 2 times 8, 4 times 4. <coughs> the S column, we're going to add those together. 1 plus 16 is 17. 2 plus 8 is 10. 4 plus 4 is 8. The difference column, we'll subtract smaller from larger. 16 minus 1 is 15, 8 minus 2 is 6, 4 minus 4 is 0. Now the number we're looking for is a number in our middle term, which is a 6, which is right here, so we're going to use 2 and 8. Okay. Um, the two numbers we're going to use, 2 and 8, the larger number that we're using, which is the 8, will always be the same sign as the middle term. Middle term is a negative 6x, so it's negative, so the 8 will be negative. 
Number with circles in difference column, D for different signs. So if this one's negative, the other one is positive. And step five, cancel if possible. You can cancel if they're, they're the same. See how we have an x plus 2 here and x plus 2 here? Those are going to cancel. So we end up with x minus 8 over x minus 3. And again, we cannot cancel the x's because of the minus in here. Everything has to be multiplication. We'd have to have x times 8 and x times 3 for us to be able to cancel. Okay, let's look at this one. Let's turn a new page. Okay, so number four. We have x minus four over x squared plus six x plus eight plus x minus one over x squared minus four. Step one, factor our denominators. This one here is the PSD method, and this one is dots, difference two squares. Let's first look at the, uh, the x squared plus 6x plus 8. PSD because it's x squared, x, no x, no number in front of the x squared. PSD, we take the number at the end, the 8, and we come up with our three columns. P is a uh, product to give us 8, so we've got 1 times 8, 2 times 4. The S column, we add those together. 1 plus 8 is 9, 2 plus 4 is 6. Difference column, we subtract them, smaller from larger. 8 minus 1 is 7, 4 minus 2 is 2. Number we're looking for is the number in our middle term, which is 6. So we're going to use 2 and 4. So we got 2 and 4. Now our larger number that we're using, which is the 4, is always going to be the same sign as the middle term, which is positive. The number of our circles in the S column, S for same sign, so if this one's positive, then 2 will be positive. <coughs> okay, the x squared minus 4, difference 2 squares. We try to write it as something squared minus something else squared. You ask yourself, what times itself gives you the x squared? Well, x times x gives you x squared. And you ask yourself, what times itself gives you the 4? And 2 times 2 gives you the 4. Now, if you're able to write it as something squared minus something else squared, you take what's inside your first set of parentheses, you add what's in your last, and you take what's inside your first, and you subtract what's in your last. So this factors as x plus 2 times x minus 2. And that's step 1. Now step two. Figure out your least common denominator. Let's start there. So our first factor is the x plus two. And we're looking for the greatest number of x plus twos in a single denominator. There's one here, there's one here. So the greatest number of x plus twos in a single denominator is one. Now again, we're not counting how many there are. We're just looking for the greatest number in a single denominator. Then I go to my next one, the x plus 4. I'm looking for the greatest number of x plus 4 in a single denominator. There's one here, there's none here. So the greatest number of x plus 4 in a single denominator is 1. And then our last factor, the x minus 2. I'm looking for the greatest number of x minus 2 in a single denominator. There's none here, there's one here, so we'll have 1. So that's our LCD. Now we're going to look at our old fraction and see what new item was put down below. Let me write these down first. x minus 4 and x minus 1. Look at our first fraction. We had an x plus 2. The x plus 2 is still there. We had an x plus 4. The x plus 4 is still there. The new item that's downstairs in the denominator is the x minus 2. So we have to put an x minus 2 up here. Whatever new item appears down here, you have to put up here. Again, mathematical rule, and this last time I'll say it. Whatever you multiply by the bottom, you have to multiply by the top. Now in our second fraction, we had an x plus 2, the x plus 2 is still there. 
we had an x minus 2, the x minus 2 is still there. The new item down in the denominator is the x plus 4, so we had to put an x plus 4 up here. Well, we're going to get rid of parentheses up on top, combine together like terms. So we got x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. And negative 4 times negative 2 gives us a positive 8. Now over here, x times x is x squared. x times 4 is 4x. Negative 1 times x is negative 1x or negative x. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Well, combine together like terms. So we're going to have x squared, negative 2x, negative 4x is negative 6x. And uh, all the rest of this stays the same. Over here, combine together like terms. We've got 4x minus 1x, that gives us 3x. And everything else stays the same. Okay, step three. We want to add or subtract the top parts and merge into a single fraction. So we're going to have uh, x squared minus 6x plus 8 plus x squared plus 3x minus 4 all over our denominator. Well, combine together like terms. x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. Negative 6x plus 3x is negative 3x. And 8 minus 4 gives us 4. Now, I'm thinking that this doesn't actually factor the top part. Because remember, our fourth step is to factor the top, factor the bottom. If it would factor, it's the key number. So let's try that. The reason why it's key numbers is because we have x squared, x, no x, and there's a number in front of our x squared. With the key number, we take our number at the beginning times the number at the end. So we've got 2 times 4, which gives us 8. And we'll write down all products give us 8. So we've got 1 times 8, 2 times 4. The s column, we add them together. 1 plus 8 is 9, 2 plus 4 is 6. The difference column, we subtract smaller from larger. 8 minus 1 is 7, 4 minus 2 is 2 number we're looking for is a number on our middle term, which is 3, which we don't have. So assuming I didn't forget any products, or added or subtracted incorrectly, this uh, won't factor. And since that won't factor, we obviously can't cancel. So this is our answer right here. Let's take a look at our next problem. Let me grab a drink here. Number five, we have y plus three over four y squared minus twenty one y plus five minus one over four y squared minus seventeen y plus four. First step. Factor our denominators. So let's start with this first one here. Um, we've got 4y squared minus 21y plus 5. This is the key number. reason why I know it's a key number is y squared, y, no y, and there's a number in front of our y squared. The key number, we take our number at the beginning times the number at the end. So we take 4 times 5, which gives us 20. Write down all products, give us 20. We got 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 4 times 5. The S column, add them together. 1 plus 20 is 21, 2 plus 10 is 12, 4 plus 5 is 9. Difference column, subtract them. 20, 20 minus 1 is 19, 10 minus 2 is 8, 5 minus 4 is 1. Number we're looking for is a number in our middle term, which is 21, which is right here. So we're going to use 1 and 20. And remember, we rewrite our middle term using those two numbers. 
Now the larger number, which is the 20, is always going to be the same sign as the middle term, which was negative. So that's negative 20y. Uh, the number I circle is in the s column, s for same signs. Um, so if the 20 is negative, the 1 has to be negative. So we've got negative 1y. Factor by grouping. Uh, first group, the first two terms, have a 4y in common. And that gives us y minus 5. Second group has nothing in common, but the first term is negative, so I'll factor out negative 1, and that gives us y minus 5. Now they both have a y minus 5, so I'll factor that out, and you could cross off the y minus 5s to see what goes in your second set of parentheses, which would be the 4y minus 1. So this first fraction becomes y plus 3 over y minus 5 times 4y minus 1. Well, let's look at our second uh, denominator. We got 4y squared minus 17y plus 4. This is again the key number because we have y squared, y, no y, and there's a number in front of our y squared. Now we'll take our number at the beginning times the number at the end. So we got 4 times 4, which gives us 16. Write down all products, give us 16. We got 1 times 16, 2 times 8, 4 times 4. S column, we want to add those together. 1 plus 16 is 17, 2 plus 8 is 10, 4 plus 4 is 8. Difference column, we want to subtract smaller from larger. 16 minus 1 is 15, 8 minus 2 is 6, 4 minus 4 is 0. Number we're looking for is always a number in our middle term, which is 17. So we're going to use 1 and 16. And again, what we do with that is we rewrite our middle term using those two numbers. Our larger number, which is a 16, will be the same sign as the middle term, which was negative. The number of circles in the S column, which means there's S for same signs, so if 16 is negative, then the 1 will be negative. Then I'll factor by grouping. First group has a 4y in common, and that gives us y minus 4. Second group, uh, first term is negative, so I'll factor out negative 1, and that gives us y minus 4. Now they both have a y minus 4, and again, you can cross out the y minus 4s to see what goes in your second set of parentheses, which would be 4y minus 1. So this second fraction factors as y minus 4 times 4y minus 1. And now step 1. Step 2. Figure out your LCD, your least common denominator. Let's start there. I look at my first factor, the y minus 5. And I know you get tired of hearing me say this, but I just want to really emphasize it. Um, we're looking for the greatest number of y minus 5s in a single denominator. Well, there's one here, there's none here. So the greatest number of y minus 5 in any single denominator is 1. Then I go to my 4y minus 1. And we're looking for the greatest number of 4y minus 1s in any single denominator. There's one here, there's one here. So the greatest number of 4y minus 1s is 1. Then we'll go to our next factor, the y minus 4. I'm looking for the greatest number of y minus 4s in any single denominator. There's none here, there's one here. So greatest number of y minus 4s is 1. With the exception, I think, of the uh, last problem, yeah, last problem, the answer will, will always be 1 on these. And you won't want to cross many in a homework where the answer is 2 or 3. They just get too hideous. So that's our LCD. OK. Well, we want to figure out, um, we're rewriting each fraction with that new denominator. So we have to figure out what's changed. Here we had a y minus 5, a y minus 5 is still there. 4y minus 1, 4y minus 1 is still there. The new item down below is the y minus 4, so we have to put that up on top. Now over in our second fraction, we had y minus 4, y minus 4 is still there. 4y minus 1, still there. The new item down below is the y minus 5, so I have to put a y minus 5 up on top. Well, I want to multiply those together. Leave the bottom part alone. Y times Y is Y squared. 
y times negative 4 is negative 4y. 3 times y is 3y. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. And over here, 1 times y minus 5 is just y minus 5. Well, come on, we got like terms here. So we're going to have y squared, negative 4y plus 3y is negative 1y, or negative y, minus 12, over this. Minus y minus 5 over y minus 5, 4y minus 1, y minus 4. Okay, step three. They have the same denominator now, so we want to add or subtract the top parts and merge into a single fraction. Remember, a negative out in front of your fraction flips the sign of everything up on top. So this negative is going to flip the sign of the y and the negative 5. So we have y squared minus y minus 12 minus y plus 5 all over y minus 5 4y minus 1, y minus 4. Combine together like terms. Negative y, negative y is negative 2y. Negative 12 plus 5 gives us negative 7. Um, let me double check that. Seems a weird answer to come up with. Yeah, yeah. Now that obviously doesn't uh, factor uh, because the only thing that gives you 7 is 1 times 7, and adding or subtracting those doesn't give you the 2. So that's our answer. Assuming they didn't make a basic math error somewhere. I have been known to do that, especially when, when I'm fading. <laughs> Kind of tired. Way past my bedtime, 6.30. Okay, let's look at our next problem. So we've got x minus 2 over x squared minus 1 minus x plus 3 over x squared plus 3x plus 2 plus 3 over x squared plus x minus 2. Well, we our first step, factor all of our denominators. This is uh, dots, difference two squares, two terms of minus three in it. This one's PSD, because we got an x squared, x, no x, no number in front of the x squared. And this one's also PSD, because we got x squared, x, no x, no number in front of the x squared. Well, let's look at the first one, the x squared minus 1. Two terms minus 2 it, you try to write it as something squared minus something else squared. Uh, you ask yourself what times self gives you the x squared, well x times x gives you x squared. And what times self gives you the 1, well 1 times 1 gives you that. So we take what's inside our first set of parentheses, we add what's in our last, and then you take what's inside your first and you subtract what's in your last. So this first part factors as x minus 2 over x plus 1, x minus 1. Now the second one here. We got uh, x squared plus 3x plus 2. PSD, we take the number at the end, which is 2, and we come up with our three columns. We write down all products, give us 2. Well, 1 times 2. We add them. 1 plus 2 is 3. We subtract them. 2 minus 1 is 1. number we're looking for is a number in our middle term, which is 3. So we're going to use 1 and 2. Now our larger number, which is the 2, is always going to be the same sign as the middle term, which is positive. The number I circles in the S column, S for same sign, so if this is positive, then this is positive. So that's the way that factors. So this is 
x plus 1 times x plus 2. Now our next one. We have uh, x squared plus x minus 2. And as weird as it seems, um, we're using 2 again. So we're using the same table. Number we're looking for is the 1, which is over here. So we're going to have x, x. We'll use 1 and 2 again. Our larger number, which is a 2, which will be always be the same sign as the middle term, which is positive. Now the middle, the number we're looking for here is 1, which is in the difference column, which if this is positive, then the other one has to be negative. So that one factors this way. That seems weird just to have a 3 up there. Is that what I have? Yeah, just a 3. Okay, step 2. Figure out your least common denominator and rewrite each fraction with that new denominator. We'll start with our first, well, actually, let me put these down. We'll start with our first factor, the x plus 1. We're looking for the greatest number of x plus 1s in a single denominator. There's one here, one here, none here. So the greatest number of x plus 1s in a single denominator is 1. Then we'll go to our next factor, the x minus 1. And we're looking for the greatest number of x minus 1s in a single denominator. There's one here, none here, one here. So the greatest number of x minus 1s in a single denominator is 1. Then I'll go to my next factor, the x plus 2. I'm looking for the greatest number of x plus 2s in a single denominator. There's none here, one here, one here, so it would be 1. So that's our LCD. And we're going to rewrite each fraction with that new denominator. Grab a drink here. Okay. Let's see what's changed. Look at our first fraction. We had an x plus 1. The x plus 1 is still there. We had an x minus 1. The x minus 1 is still there. The new item down in the denominator is the x plus 2. So we have to put it up on top. On our second fraction, we had a um, x plus 1. The x plus 1 is still there. We had an x plus 2, the x plus 2 is still there. The new item downstairs is the x minus 1, so we have to put it up on top. And then our last fraction here, we had an x minus 1, the x minus 1 is still there. We had an x plus 2, the x plus 2 is still there. The new item down in the denominator is the x plus 1, so we have to put it up on top also. Whatever you multiply by the bottom, you have to multiply by the top. Okay. Well, multiply these together. These are conjugates, so I can make this a little bit simpler, but let me pretend I don't see that. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times 2 gives us negative 4 over our denominator. Minus x times x is x squared x times negative 1 is negative 1x, 3 times x is 3x, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, over our denominator. And this is a distributive property here, 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times 1 is 3, over our denominator. Okay. Well, let's combine together like terms. So we're going to have x squared, 2x minus 2x drops away. So we got x squared minus 4 over our denominator. Minus, and then x squared, negative 1x plus 3x gives us a positive 2x minus 3 over our denominator. plus 3x plus 3 over our denominator. Okay, now we're ready for the next step. 
we want to merge these into a single fraction uh, by adding or subtracting the top parts. Now remember if you have a negative out in front of your uh, fraction, that negative is going to flip the sign of all the terms up on top. So this negative here is going to flip the sign of the x squared to 2x and negative 3. So we're going to have x squared minus 4 minus x squared minus 2x plus 3 plus 3x plus 3 all over our denominator. Okay, combine together like terms. x squared minus x squared cancels. Here we got negative 2x plus 3x, that gives us x. Um, here we have a negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Um, plus 3 gives us 2. So we got x plus 2. Okay, step four, factor your top, factor your bottom. Well, the top and bottom are both factored as much as they can be. So step five, cancel if possible. See how we have an x plus two here and we have an x plus two here. Those are going to cancel. And we're left with one over x plus one times x minus one. Now one thing I want to mention up above here is when you've got conjugates, Conjugates means the first and the second are the same, the sign in the middle is different. See how the x minus 2 times x plus 2, they both start with x, and they both have a 2 at the end. But this one has a minus between them, and this one has a plus between them. When you got conjugates, all you have to do is multiply your first parts together and your last parts. So x times x is x squared, and negative 2 times 2 gives you negative 4. So it saves a little bit of work if you recognize that. Now you'll notice if you don't recognize it, you still get the correct answer. And let's look at this last problem. Okay, so we've got 3 over x minus 3 over x plus 3 plus 3 over x plus 3 squared. Well, step one. Uh, fa uh, factor all your denominators. This would become 3 over x minus 3 over x plus 3 plus 3 over x plus 3 times x plus 3. That's what that x plus 3 squared means. Step 2. Figure out your LCD and rewrite each fraction with that new denominator. Well, realize that a single x here is different than x plus 3. So we'll start with the x. I'm looking for the greatest number of single x's in a single denominator. There's one here, none here, none here. So the greatest number of single x's in a single denominator is 1. And then I go to my next factor, the x plus 3. I'm looking for the greatest number of x plus 3's in a single denominator. There's none here, there's 1 here, there's 2 here. So the greatest number of x plus 3's in a single denominator is 2. So that's our LCD. And we're going to rewrite each fraction with that new denominator. Okay. Now we're going to look at our old denominator and um, see what's changed. Well, we had an x here. The x there is still there. The new item we put down in the denominator is the x plus 3, x plus 3. So whatever we put down there, we have to put up on top. Now our second fraction, we had an x plus 3, that x plus 3 is still there. The new items downstairs is the x and the other x plus 3. Now our last fraction, we had an x plus 3, that's still there. We had another x plus 3, that's still there. The new item downstairs is the x, so we have to put that up on top. Well, let's go ahead and multiply together the um, what's up in the numerators on top. So here we got x plus 3 times x plus 3. 
x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. Three, 3 times x is 3x. Three, 3 times 3 is 9. Over our denominator. minus, this is a distributive property, we'll take 3x times x is 3x squared, 3x times 3 is 9x, over our denominator, plus 3x over our denominator. Well, combine together like terms here, so we got um, x squared, 3x plus 3x is 6x, plus 9, and then everything else remains the same. So I'll go ahead and write it all down. <coughs> These problems make your hands hurt from writing. Okay. Well, back to our first fraction. We'll multiply the 3 through. 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times 6x is 18x. 3 times 9 is 27. Over our denominator. And everything else remains the same, so I'll go ahead and carry it all through. And that was step one. Okay, step two. We want to add or subtract our uh, our top parts and merge into a single fraction. Remember, if you have a negative out in front of your fraction, it's going to flip the sign of all the terms up on top. So it'll flip the sign of the 3x squared and the 9x. So this is going to become 3x squared plus 18x plus 27 minus 3x squared minus 9x plus 3x all over our denominator. Well, combine together like terms. <coughs> we have uh, 3x squared minus 3x squared, that cancels. We have 18x minus 9x plus 3x. Well, 18x minus 9x is 9x plus 3x is 12x and then the plus 27. I think I'm off of my numbering here, aren't I? Okay, that should be step three. Time for bed. This is step four. Okay, step four, factor your top, factor your bottom. Well, the top part here is the GCF. Uh, they both at least have a three in common, so I'll factor out a three, and that gives us four X plus nine. Now, step five says cancel if possible. Well, there's nothing to cancel here. Now, the way they will write their answer is I'll write this as x times x plus 3 squared. But that would be your answer. And I believe that was the last problem, so I guess I can stop the, the little video. Adding and subtracting rational expressions. <coughs> 